Synchronous machine power angle curve. The power angle is measured between the rotor pole direction and the stator magnetic field direction. If the angle is zero, then the torque is zero. In motors, the rotor lags the magnetic field. In generators, the rotor leads. Even if the power angle is a constant value, the torque is not. Because of the slotted stator structure, the torque oscillates. My task is to find the average torque value. I'm going to simulate a set of DC magnetic problems in quick field with different rotor positions and different values, momentary values of the current in the state of winding. Quickfield features an application programming interface, so there is a way to automate the task. I can automatically generate problems. I can automatically edit the geometry model, adjust the material properties and the field sources, and analyze the results. Okay, let's start Quickfield and see how it could be done there. In Quickfield, I create new problem. Generator. Next. Problem type is magnetostatics. Model class is plane parallel. Length units are millimeters and the axial length of the generator is 65 millimeters. Finish. On the left you can see the problem pane and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You can draw the geometry model here or you can import the geometry model from the AutoCAD.exe file. Here is the file that I created in the card system. Now I will import the model. The model is imported. Here you can recognize stator and rotor parts, permanent magnets, the shaft. Let's assign labels. For labels you can explain the geometric object's meaning and provide material properties. Switch to Select Object Mode, click the object to select, and type in the label name here. This is shaft. This is stator. These are steel parts of a rotor. Hold the control button press to select several objects. And these are payment magnets. The payment magnets are made of the same material, but the magnetization direction varies, so I should give different labels. Let's open the picture. So this payment magnet is magnetized to the right. I give it label payment magnet plus zero. This payment magnet is magnetized up. I give it label payment magnet plus 90. This payment magnet is magnetized down. I give it label payment magnet minus 90. And this payment magnet is magnetized to the left. I give it label payment magnet plus 180. Okay. Now let's zoom in. I should also assign label to the air. Now let's assign labels to the slots with the three-phase winding. There are four half slots with the phase A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Then there are four half slots with the phase C minus Then there are four half slots with the phase B plus The four half slots with the phase A minus and four half slots with the phase C 
plus and four half slots with the base b minus and then it repeats a plus C minus B plus A minus C plus and B minus. Okay, let's check the summary. We have 59 blocks and all 59 blocks are labeled. So that's all for black labels. I need to assign label to the external boundary. This would be external. And I would like to add the middle line in the air gap. Let me see. The radius 36 millimeters. This point radius 37.5. Okay. I should insert a circle. With the diameter of 73 millimeters. Insert. And for these edges, I give label A gap. Okay. Now let's provide physical properties for the labels. Double click the label in the tree. Negative magnetic permeability of the air is 1. Negative magnetic permeability of the shaft is 1. For the rotor, I should specify the BH curve data. I already have the data prepared here in the file, so I simply copy this and paste it here. Close. OK. And the stator is made of the same steel, so I use the same BH curve data here. OK. Now, what about the three phase winding? You see, this is the magnetostatic analysis. I'm going to freeze time and take a look at the magnetic field distribution at some fixed moment of time. So I should specify momentary values of the currents in the three-phase winding. Winding is made of copper with relative magnetic permeability of 1. The current density is 3 amperes per millimeter squared, which I should convert to amperes per meter squared times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, and the current is a sinusoidal function of time, so I multiply this by sine of angular velocity omega multiplied by time plus the phase shift for the phase A, the phase shift is 0. Omega W is angular velocity and T is time. Let's simulate the moment of time when the T is zero. So there is no need to type this. This will be zero. Okay, I will copy this. For the phase A minus, I specified the same current density, but with negative sign. For the phase B plus, I specify same current density. This is omega multiplied by time, which is zero. And this is the phase shift for the phase B plus. The phase shift is 120 degrees. Okay, for the phase B minus, same magnitude of the current density, but with negative sign. And for the phase C plus, same magnitude of the current density, but the phase shift is 240 degrees. 
and for the phase C minus, I specify negative current density. Now that's all. Remember, we should specify the power angle between the rotor pole and the stator magnetic field. And this angle should be 30 degrees. But what is the direction of the stator magnetic field? I do not know. Let's switch off payment magnets and simulate the problem to find the configuration of the stator magnetic field and its direction. So for payment magnets, I do not specify the magnetization so far, just the permeability, which is one. And that's all. Magnetic field is contained within the machine. There is no magnetic flux going outside. So for the external boundary, I specify zero magnetic potential. Okay. For the middle line in the A-gap, there are no specific properties to assign. So I do not specify any data here. Just click OK. And you see the zero mark next to the label name. That means it's an empty label that doesn't hold any physical data. And it, this label is simply ignored during the analysis. OK, the geometry model and the data are ready. Before I can run the analysis, I should build the finite limit mesh. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Now save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem is solved. Let's take a look at the results. Uh -huh. Here you can see the magnetic field lines produced by the state of winding. And the magnetic field direction is, let me check. You can adjust the field picture and switch on the vectors to see where the north pole and where the south pole. Aha, uh -huh, indeed, this is the south pole. And this is the north pole and the direction is here. And what would be the magnetic field direction of the rotor? Let's again take a look at the picture. Okay, I will copy this picture. Paste it here. Now this payment magnet is magnetized to the right. This payment magnet is magnetized from bottom to top, this way. So the resulting magnetic flux will go in this direction. It is 45 degrees between the magnetic flux direction and the horizontal axis. Let's rotate the stator so that the magnetic field of the stator will be pointing in the same way as the magnetic field of the rotor. It seems I should rotate the stator to the left by 45 degrees and a bit more. Let's see. Open the geometry model. Switch to select objects mode. Click to select the stator. Right click. Move selection. Rotation by 45 degrees. OK, now let's check the phase A plus and A minus positions. I believe I should rotate the stator by 15 degrees more. OK. A plus. A minus. Exactly 45 degrees. OK, the geometry model was modified, so I need to reveal the fine internet mesh. Save all problem files. And solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Let's adjust the field picture and the base would be zero. And I switch on the vectors. Now you see indeed the zero line points exactly 45 degrees above the horizontal axis.
Let's switch on the payment magnets in the rotor. So far they are switched off. For payment magnets I should specify the courtesy force magnitude which is 730 kilo amperes per meter and the direction. Thanks to proper labeling it is easy. For this payment magnet the courtesy force direction is zero. For this payment magnet the courtesy force direction is 180. And for this payment magnet the courtesy force direction is plus 90. And for this payment magnet, the courtesy force direction is minus 90. Okay, let's solve the problem again. Open the results. Aha, you see the magnetic field picture has changed. Let's again adjust the field picture. Still, the torque should be zero. Let's see. I will use the contour tool, zoom in and select the middle line in the air gap. Now you see the middle line is selected and if I change the contour direction, the internal region will be selected and now I can calculate the torque. Integral calculator mechanical torque. Indeed, the torque is zero because the rotor magnetic field is aligned with the stator magnetic field. Now let's rotate the rotor by the power angle. Open the geometry model. Uh, in fact, I'd better rotate the stator because if I rotate the rotor, I should also correct the magnetization direction of the payment magnets. So I'd better to rotate the stator. In generators, rotor leads the magnetic field of the stator. And in motors, the rotor locks the magnetic field of the stator. I will simulate the generator, so I will rotate the stator to the right, behind the magnetic field of the rotor. Move selection, rotation by Remember, the 30 degrees power angle is measured in electrical degrees. In our generator, we have four poles. The geometrical angle is two times smaller than the electrical angle. And I'm going to rotate the stator behind the rotor, so I should type in the negative value, minus 15. OK. The geometry model was modified, so I need to rebuild the finite element mesh. Save all problem files and solve the problem again. OK, let's again measure the torque. I will use the contour tool. Let's zoom in. Click to select the middle line in the A gap. Contour change direction. Integrals. Mechanical torque. Now the torque value is 1.5. This torque value is calculated for the generator with axial length of 65 millimeters. Well, we have got a torque value and in fact, because of the slotted structure of the stator, this value is not constant, it depends on the rotor position. And to calculate the NAH torque value, we should simulate a set of problems with different rotor positions. And remember that the stator magnetic field also rotates with the rotor, so we have to change both the rotor position and the current momentum values. That is a tedious task to perform manually, so I will only show you one step. Okay, let's rotate the rotor. In fact, I will rotate the stator by one degree. So it looks like the rotor was moved forward by one degree. I have rotated by the one geometrical degree, but the electrical angle should be two degrees. In this machine, I have two pole pairs. So I open the phase winding properties. 
and add two degrees here. And the same for all other labels. Now that's all. Let's again build the fine implement mesh because we have modified the geometry model. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Again, I'm going to use the contour tool to select the middle line in the A gap. Contour change direction, integrals, mechanical torque. It was 1.47, now it is 1.57. You can keep going rotating the stator manually, but there is a way to automate the calculations. Quick Hill features application programming interface. That means that you can interact with Quick Hill from your own application. You can find the documentation and the examples at the active.quickfield.com website. You can use different clients, but I prefer the Microsoft Excel Visual Basic for application. Here is the file. The interface is simple. I specify the current density in the state of winding. I specify the rotor pole pairs, which is true. I specify the power angle, which is 30 degrees, electrical degrees. And I should specify the rotor angle or the stator angle sweep. Stator. The torque fluctuations period is 15 degrees. So let's rotate the rotor, the stator from 0 to 15 degrees with the step of 1 degree. And if I press get torque button, the VBA program will start. Let's open the VBA editor. Here is the program. I will show it side by side with QHILD so you will see what happens. First, I create the link to QuickField application. Then I create the link to the active problem. Then I load the model and create the link to the model. Then I read the input parameters from the Excel. And then I begin the sweep cycle. I put stator in proper position, then I build the mesh, set the model, adjust the current values in the state of winding, save the data file, solve the problem, calculate the torque, and go to the beginning of the cycle. In this subroutine, I calculate the momentary values of the currents. Many multiplied by the sine function. In this subroutine, I store the proper current density value in the label. I take the label name, the current density, and modify the label any current value. In this subroutine, I rotate the stator. I take the stator and rotate it by the proper angle. And in this subroutine, I use the A gap to build the integration contour and to calculate the Maxwell torque. So let's see what happens. First, the stator should be rotated. Then the mesh should be built. Then the model file should be saved. Then the currents should be adjusted in the state of winding. And if you check the label properties, you will see this is not the values we have specified. This value was calculated here in the program. 
Now the data file will be saved and the problem will be solved. We will put in Excel the angle value and the torque. Let's see the torque value is 1.28 and in Excel we have 1.28. Now let's see what will be the other values. Fifteen problems are simulated, and you see indeed the torque there is not constant. Let's take a look at the plot. Here you can see the periodic fluctuations of the torque, and the average value is. One point twenty eight newtons per meter. This value is calculated for the generator with the axial length of sixty five millimeters. If you search for the synchronous machine power angle diagram on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the result pictures, and download the simulation files. The simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any Quickfield edition, including Quickfield Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.